Welcome to your next tutorial in CSS, and I understand that the last couple of videos have had a lot of material in them. Holy mackerel. So I'm happy to say that this one will be a lot more easy going, not, not as much information. And I also believe you'll be happy with the results, because we're going to be learning about IDs, division tags, and positioning. And the reason why I think you'll be happy about this is, be, uh, is because, uh, for an example here, this will align all the paragraph tags. Well, what if you don't want all of them? What if you want a lot of them, but not all of them? Or maybe you just want one of them uh, to be aligned like this. But um, how do you go about doing that? What you can do is create what are called IDs. So first, let's create a couple uh, P tags. And I'll just call them uh, both Adam. Uh, it's all it's on my mind right now. Me, me, me. And look, well, they're both centered, just like, well, just like we saw. Well, uh, in order to create an ID, what you do is you go inside the first opening tag and access the attribute attribute ID. And let's call this one real because let's face it, that's the real Adam. And then this one, um, let's call him fake. Just because we know he's fun. We know this is the real one, so what else could this one be? Can't be the real Adam. So, after saving and refreshing the page, you'll notice that they're both still in the center. And that's because in the CSS file, we're still addressing all P tags. So in order to address the ID that we want, what we'll do is put a pound, followed by the ID name, real. So when I click save, and then refresh the page, now only the real Adam is now in the center. That that phony guy is just back to where he belongs, just way out there. And uh, that's really about it for IDs. You can apply IDs to anything, to uh, your body tag if you want, which uh, I wouldn't really make any sense because then everything in there is going to change. Um, your P tags, H1 through H6, table, images, just everything. Forms, all the inputs. Uh, we'll learn a lot about that in JavaScript. So next is, are the division tags. So first of all, let me bring these back to normal P tags. Division tags, what those do is it kind of gives hands to the browser to grasp that whatever you have within between those div, div tags. So first, uh, I'll make it, it'll be a lot more clear when I create those div tags. So it's just div for division. And what should I put in here? Um, I think I spelled that right. And the div tags, it's this will be read just as plain text. You can put div tags around tables, you can put them around images, anything. I'm just going to show you plain text just to make it simple. And I refresh the page. Now it's everything is just like the way it is. All all these p tags with the div in the middle there. So let's get into modifying this guy. So oh, first of all, I want to give this an ID as well, just so we can. Uh, just do that. So, I just got fake. That's all I was thinking of right now. So I'll change this up here to fake. So another thing I would like to teach you are is uh, the border. In order to see the border, so you can see all the things, all the different things that I'm doing. Uh, first, you can write down the pixel. Border width comes first. So I'll put down like three pixels space. Then the next thing that comes in is uh, the style. So I'm going to use solid. So you can use like dash or dotted or whatever. And then the color, I'll go green. So I don't think I've done it this way before, but it does work. So when I refresh the page, well, now you can see it, and it goes all the way across. So we can also mess with the height and the width as well for these tags. So I'll throw in height. You know what, I don't want to mess with the height because, only because I want it to just to go around the actual text. So I'll just put down width equals, mm, I don't know, 150 pixels. So you know I will me mess with the height. Oh, geez, I did this completely wrong. Colon, there you go. I don't know what I was doing there. And I will mess with the height just so you can see what it looks like. And I keep doing that. Um, let's see here. 
75 pixels. That should be good. So I save this and then refresh the page. There, there it is. Now I want to get into positioning because there's also a position element of which you can mess this around with. So I'm going to type in position. And uh, there's three different types of position. There's absolute, relative, and fixed. The first one I'm going to show you is absolute. And what this allows you to do is it, it tells exactly where this division or any whatever, whatever element you're using goes. And it can go anywhere. So we're going to need two more in order to specify where it goes. Top and left. Now, uh, that's I didn't have a semicolon, I believe that's what happened. There we go. Or you have to have your semicolon between each. And what this does is specify how far from that corner it goes. Its default is zero, zero. So like if I just typed in zero pixels here and zero pixels here, and you're gonna see something interesting that happens. When I press F5, it then goes into that zero, zero right there. And you might notice these other paragraph tags are now in order. That's what is so great about this, and that's what makes it the future for how you position things on your website. You can tell exactly where it goes, um, even if something else is supposed to be there. And that is what is so great about the absolute positioning. So for this, this will be your y-axis. So I go 50. It will go down 50 pixels. And then for left, let's make it 20 pixels. Save. Press F5, and there it is. Now, the next type of positioning that you could be messing with is relative positioning. And what this does is, instead of starting from the zero, zero right here, it's going to start from wherever it's normally, normally supposed to be. So, you know what, let me, let me uh, cut this, save, and show you where this is supposed to be. So it starts right there, so that's technically the zero, zero. And what's going to happen with the relative position is that it's gonna go down 50 and to the right 20 starting from there. So I'm gonna press F5 and it did just that. And that's pretty much the only difference between relative and absolute. Now fixed positioning is almost exactly like absolute positioning except the difference is it will stay on the screen even if you scroll somewhere else. So I'll press F5 and now it's back to where it is for absolute positioning but now I'm going to want to add in some more uh, paragraphs here because I want to be able to scroll so I click save and I refresh the page when I scroll you'll notice that it stays right where it is even when I scroll as opposed to absolute which I should probably show you so you believe me when I press F5 it now goes with the page. And those are pretty much the three different types of positioning. Um, that's the advantage of using uh, division tags along with IDs. So there wasn't too much, but this is probably the most important video that you'll learn when it comes to formatting your web pages, being able to specify where certain things go. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I'll see you next time.